This is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. Becca here. This is not America's sweetheart Davian. It's Billy Starks and the super fly guy Trayvon Jordan. This is the fly side fly Jalen Brandon. Hardcore princess Jules Malone. Hi there, this is the bubblegum princess Alexia Nicole. This is the Brazilian Wonder Woman Christy Jane. This is the baddest black belt Chennai Kai. This is Kid Bandit. The smash hit Joel Bateman. This is Robin Renegade. Cody Hawk. Brutal Bob Evans. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. What's up, everybody? It is the sad boy for life, rock star stud, the self-proclaimed tank buster, and the new king of the scenic city, Carson Dobeck, and you are watching Wrestling With Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show with Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. The trusted choice, choice for interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube at CastBox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Playoff One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J, and it is a great day for wrestling, because we are wrestling with... Carson Dubeck. I like it. I like it. I think I t- stick to the podcast. But if that's not co- if that's not Colin, your name, I think you got a bright future in ring announcing. <laughs> hey, if uh, anybody wants to uh, hire me, they know how to contact me. <laughs> how are you, Carson? Heck yeah. I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, by the time this is out, I'm most likely probably uh, pretty banged up after a wild Texas Tornado match, uh, or Texas Tornado tag match with uh, the Coven of the Goat at live uh, on IDBTV. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll talk about them in a bit. Um, but of course, where can we find everything, uh, everything crossing uh, Delta on social media and merchandise? Um, ninety percent of the things are uh, B C Dilbeck. That's D I L B E C K. Um, that's Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter. Uh, don't. It, unless we're personal friends, um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything. Pro wrestling tees, you can snag some sweet uh, Carson Dobek merch. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all of them. I always end up forgetting a couple. Well, uh, even if you did uh, forget uh, one or two, uh, all of the links to all your social media and your merchandise will be in the description of the video below, both on YouTube and Foxbox. So if you click the link, you will be there. And, um, Perfect. Uh, just for our listeners out there, uh, just so they know, there is a bit of a delay uh, between you and me. For, um, you can hear me, but there is a delay of, of reaction. It's not, um, you know, just dead silence. <laughs> Alright, um, but let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, you work for uh, TWE Chattanooga. Can you tell us your relationship with the company? Um, so I... I know this is probably the most cliche thing ever, but and it's ninety percent of probably ninety percent of everyone's opening thing. But uh, I train there. Uh, that's like that's my home. Uh, the trainers down there, everything you know. It's just hard to say like my relationship there because it's more of like a family there. We're we're such the whole group from TWE is just like a giant team and family and I honestly couldn't ask for a better group of people to be like to call my family like everyone down there is the mottos get better together and I feel like that's what we're doing especially this coming uh you know this the start from the start of this year we're 
on our stride and we're not slowing down. I mean, it can't be a cliche if it's true, right? One hundred percent. You're that is correct. Now, um, you you mentioned it before. Um, you're in somewhat of an intense rivalry with the cousin of the goat. Can you tell us about it? Um. So honestly, I'm. T- Tired of uh, me and Noah Hoffman and Aaron Wade and Derek Neal are just tired of looking at their ugly faces and uh, we want them out. Plain and simple. I mean, if you pay attention, if anyone watching pays any attention to uh, to TWE, it all started by Tank bullying me. Right. I came out to have a match and Tank just decided, hey, I'm just going to beat this kid to a pulp. Right, and it kind of went from there, no? Yeah, um, and we, you know, Aaron Wade, we, uh, my bet, my personal life like this is as real as it gets a- aaron wade is my best friend and the bug in his ear but either way we have him on our side now and so it's all culminated to this texas tornado tag match me and noah hoffman versus cj Lawler and Nathan Mowry and honestly I'm going to make sure that Nathan Mowry cannot leave on his own will. Now uh, you know speaking of Tank um, and you know him it started with him bullying you. Um, you did have a match uh, and you did win that match. What did that mean to you in that experience? Um, if we're pulling back the curtain just a little bit, I'm not going to do it too much, but Tank was a guy that I watched, uh, growing up a lot and beating him did, did, it kind of was a come full circle moment. Um, and so, yeah, it did, it did mean a lot to me beating Tank. Um, can you tell us about your relationship with your tag team partner and trust the process, Aaron Wait. Oh man, that's my, that's my dude. Um, we are, me and Wade are as close as close can be. We, there's not a day we don't talk. There's, if something happens, I can go to him. I, um, and it all started. We, um, if you remember, uh, longtime TWE staple Bailey Blake, um, I moved in with him personally, and um, we were just happened to look for another roommate. And Wade, we offered Wade, and Wade moved in. And I mean, we shared rooms together. We sh- shared jo- jobs together. Like we've been through so much that we've. We are so close, and I wouldn't do anything without him. I, I wouldn't be here without Aaron Wade. I could go on for hours talking about Wade. <laughs> well, uh, can you tell us a pet peeve about Aaron that you just don't understand? Oh, my gosh. Um, who... A pet peeve. I have so many. <laughs> List them. Um, okay, here's one that I've never really understood. And um, I'll just list this one because I don't want to bury him too much. But uh, when we go to the gym, 
for some reason, Wade finds himself right in the middle of where everyone else is working out. And I can't stand, I was like, dude, Wade, let's go over here, give everyone some space. No, nah, Wade's right there in the middle of everything. And it literally drives me crazy. Well, you, you, uh, you and him were a, GF, a, a GSWF tag team champions together. Um, you know, obviously being so close to him, what did that moment mean to you? Um, that moment meant, it is probably one of, if not my top moment of my career. Um, I, I remember winning the titles and then just looking over at him and he's, we're both, we're both going through the same thing. And, uh, if you watch the match, we hugged and I just told him, I was like, Hey man, I love you. Thank you for always being like, thank you for being you. And then. So that moment, there's probably only one more moment that me and him have had that means more, and it was when we wrestled at the uh, Christmas show uh, 2021 at TWE. Now, uh, you did win tag team gold with, um, as you mentioned, Bailey. Um, and it was very early on in your career as well. Um, was there, what was maybe the difference between that kind of tag team champions and, uh, this time? So one, one of the main things is, uh, that first time it was so sprung on so quick and you really don't have time to... The whole time I was like, man, I don't know if I'm good enough to be a champion. Yeah, I have this belt, but am I, you know, am I, am I getting by with being Bailey's tag partner or am I getting by on us as a team? Um, and that time I always felt as like I was Bailey's sidekick per se. And it's nothing to do with, like against Bailey. It's just how I felt. I love Bailey to death. But with this one, it feels like we're a working unit we're a group of just best friends, we're both equal, and we bring a lot to the table. So you felt more, uh, I don't want to say more deserving this time around, but you felt like, yeah, I belong here, I belong, no? Yes, 100%, that's exactly what it was. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. The the first tag title run was like, all right, you got lucky, kid. The second one was was basically a, hey, you you belong here now. Okay. Um, now uh, you were in the ring with Rhino. What was that experience like being in the ring with such an an e- ECW you know icon? Uh, scary as hell. <laughs> um, I never been more scared in my life. I, maybe, maybe my interactions with cruel, but, um, yeah, I was terrified. I was like, all right, I should stop listening to these two goons, uh, and just start, uh, doing my own thing. Cause it's getting my ass kicked a couple times. Did you get gored by Rhino? No, and at some points I wish I would have, because who can say they got gored by Rhino, but I really don't want to wake up the next morning feeling the gore. Like, not, uh, it's fun in the moment, but not, uh, you know, the aftermath. <laughs> You're completely right. Now, um, you are a part of the big stocks brand. Can you tell us about your relationship with Billy and uh, Mouse? Um, 
Billy is, I uh, mean, I consider Billy like a little sister to me. Eve, um, during Uncharted, uh, me, Billy, we would just talk. Like, I think the first conversation, like, we really actually had, we were just talking about injuries that we've all, we both had. Um, I can, uh, I'll tell you a funny story about Billy. Um, I was asleep at during uncharted territory up on the ring and I just start feeling this sharp pain on my face and I wake up to Billy Starks popping the pimples on my face. Ouch. Um but yeah, Billy means a lot to me. I'm proud I'm super proud of her and I think I think the sky's the limit for that kid even though she's not a kid anymore. Pop somebody's pimples while they're sleeping. That's what I ask, but I mean, once you get to know Billy, it's very on brand for Billy Starks. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say so. Um, that being said, you did beat Billy in a staring contest, no? Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. I did. I beat Billy Starks in a staring contest, and then she never showed up to face me in SmackDown. Here comes the pain. <laughs> um, so I'm 2-0 and against Billy, unless there's something else that I'm forgetting. Um, you... Are you still the uh, the Smack, uh, SmackDown Here Comes the Pain champion? I believe the trophy is called Helen. Yes, I called it Helen. Um, so what happened actually is they didn't want to give me the belt when I won because the footage was lost. So I just took it. Uh, and held it hostage, and but I did get beat by, um, oh my goodness, I don't remember who I got beat by, but I did end up getting beat, so no, I am not the champion anymore. I mean, is there like a rematch clause? Will you be able to obtain your trophy again? I'm, I'm biding my time. I'm, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting to seize the right opportunity to find the opponent when he's weak and strike them. Who's your, uh, who's your go-to character in SmackDown? Triple H. Ooh, yeah. I mean, considering... Triple H was the GOAT. Oh, you can continue. I cut you off. Oh, I was all I was saying was Triple H was the goat. If oh. you do, if you let me, I will go on a, like a four hour tirade of how Triple H is the greatest wrestler of all time, and we ain't ha we don't have time for that. Oh <laughs> um, well, I mean, considering that SmackDown still comes to King was in two thousand and three when he was at his you know untouchable. Uh, era? Yeah, that pretty much makes sense. Oh, yes. Right. Everyone says the Reign of Terror was terrible, but I love it. I call it that Reign was terrific. I kind of... I, I don't feel it's as bad as many people say, because that's when I started really... Watching pro wrestling is when he was champion, and I just thought, you know, he was Triple H. He, he was going to be champion for us at that point. <laughs> right? I'd say that's what kids think of Roman Reigns now. Um, it might actually be true, considering he's held it for almost four years. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been forever. Too long. Um, could you tell us about costing? Oh, Jesus. 
Um, so Car Sting was um, one of my favorite movies of all time is The Crow. Um, and the infamous car sting incident is when at a nightmare on Dayton Boulevard, 2021, I came out to the crow decked out in the crow uh, gimmicks, uh, the face paint, the trench coat and a bodysuit. that was Cheyenne Newman's Jaden's wife. Um, she had let me borrow it. Um, uh, but yeah, I did that, and then the infamous moment is I go up, I jump out, I do my normal conhilo, but the bodysuit's so tight that I couldn't get a good jump. I clipped the rope with my knee pad and then completely brained myself on the concrete. Ooh. And ended up with a concussion. Wow. <laughs> That's uh Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, it seems like it was a good time until that moment, no? <laughs> yeah, um, it was going great. Uh, now it's just one of them that all my buddies, would, like, Wade would be like, hey, remember that car sting moment? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. It was really cool until it really wasn't. <laughs> what? I could imagine that it was a better moment than being a country singer, no? Who the country singer. Man, that was bad. Um, so, if anyone who knows me knows that I am punk rock to the core... Um, I like my, I like my heavy guitar riffs and I like all that. Um, so when Jaden and Bailey Blake were like, Hey, you're going to be a country singer. It was so not me that, uh, I almost quit the business. You almost didn't get a Carson Dilbeck. Um, at sometimes though, like looking back at it, I maybe kind of wish I would have listened because it would have gave me a, a character that the audience could, could connect to but also I wanted to be true to me and true to who I was and that country singer was not it I mean you can't get into a little uh, Willie Nelson or Doug Strait <laughs> see I didn't know who that was until uh, I started doing that gimmick really Yes, I'm. I'm not big on country music. Um, I knew who I knew who Johnny Cash was, but everyone knows who Johnny Cash is, apparently. I mean, I would hope so, <laughs> but you know, being a country, being a country western gimmick, could you actually sing country western music, or was it just like? Um, I'll, before the match, I'll, I'll start the song, but... Um, the, it's... Listen to me. So, what, what it started out as, and we only did one match on it, and I will, I will eventually post this match, because it is, um, it is Drew Game's official last match. And the fact, just let me go on a little tangent here and I'll, I'll rope myself back in, but Drew Game meant the lot to me, the world to me. Um, not a lot of people knew that he had a little bit to do with my training. So the fact that I got to wrestle his last match means the world to me. But in that match to open the thing, um, I would take song requests, but never get to the song. Cause I would just sit there and tune my guitar and go deal, 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 deal. And then, turn it a little bit, and then back, 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 and I would just tune it to my last name, and by that time, someone would come in and cut me off. I mean, that sounds like a really fun <laughs> but I could understand where, you know, it's not your cup of tea because, you know, it's not what you envisioned when you first came into pro wrestling.
it was not not at all all it made me i was like man this country singer is gonna because like listen there's only one true country singer in the wrestling business and it's jeff jarrett and you cannot top jeff jarrett he's the he's one of the greatest of all times you can't top him i think you mean uh road dog Jesse james yeah 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 <laughs> I mean, he he did. I like Road Dog too, but he's no he's no king of the mountain. I mean, he sang the song. Uh, Jeff was just lip syncing. <laughs> he did sing fun. the song. Oh, true. All right. Um. Now, uh, I think that's a good segue into our next segment. Um, Cross and Bill Beck's Bizarre Adventure. You're a pro wrestler that goes up and down the roads and real crazy and bizarre things are bound to happen. Can you tell us a road story that fits that description? Oh man, I'm going to tell y'all the infamous Kentucky story with Aaron Wade and uh, Noah Hossman. Oh. Um, so we had went up to Paradigm pro in i think it was indianapolis or uh i could be wrong or jefferson indiana it was in the, the world famous uh arena um and we went down there everything went great nothing like everything was going too great on uh, like honestly um so we start you know loading up we're driving back and 30 minutes down the road uh noah hoffman looked at uh wade and was like hey why is your car when I give it? And we were like, well, what do we do? So about an hour later, Landon Hale comes back and he boosts us off. Um, we were right in front of the KFC uh, Yum Center. But Landon Hale, uh, shout out Landon Hale, I love him. Um, he boosted us off. And we got maybe an hour down the road again, and it just quit. Would not start. Turns out Aaron Wade's alternator had went out on his car. So, And we were like six, seven hours still away from home. So we had to, what we did is we called uh, Jaden. Jaden was going to come get us in the morning. But if they would have listened to me, I could. we could have slept in the car and just went to AutoZone and be like, hey, sell me a new battery, and we would have made it home, and the battery would have died probably when Wade pulled in in his driveway, but he didn't listen. Um, so we uh, Noah Hosman uh, gets us a hotel, um, and we, we've got to walk. I think it's like an hour to the hotel. We start walking, and this random dude gives us a, uh, gives us a ride, so... Thank God everything worked out in the end. But uh, Aaron Wade was ended up crying on the side of the road, and I was like, "Hey, dude, you're a fourth degree black belt. Get your stuff, like get get your shit together." And he was like, "Oh yeah, all right, I'm good now." Uh, but it was it was crazy. We ended up getting a new battery, and it died. Uh, we they drove it all the way. And it died right in Athens, Tennessee. And luckily, I live close enough to Athens that my parents came and just got the got the car fixed. That's a good story. Story for sure. Hopefully, that was the the uh, the most bizarre thing that would happen on the road. Hopefully, no. Yeah, that's I. That's the most bizarre thing, just because it was just like a series of bad events, just go, 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 go. It wasn't just like one thing that happened. It was just a series of like, oh, man. Then it was like, oh, man. Then it was just like, all right, I'm done. I was like, I'm just going to sleep type thing. All right. Um, now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But were you on the Ducks Fly to get all so? Uh, 
Yes, I was. Um, I was in the over the budget battle royal. I think is what they called it. Okay. Or the I don't remember what they called the battle royal, but um, it's one of the very early stages of me and Aaron Wade teaming. So, you know, obviously, some of the most well-respected wrestlers, um, you know, in a charity show for them. What does that mean to you? Um, it meant, it didn't really click with me, like, what I was doing, because I just went up there because, uh... Uh, Jaden and Wade went up there, so I just rode up there, and it didn't really click to me like what it really was until I got there, and I was like, "Oh man, this is a like this is cool," and it was literally just a bunch of guys just wanting wanting to see a friend and a family member have fun and get better. Um. So yeah, it just it just meant, it did mean a lot that I was allowed to be in, even if. For as short as I was in it, I was a part of. Right. It's still a moment. One hundred percent. And I'm I'm I am grateful for it. Oh. Um now um the last uh SummerSlam uh in uh Tennessee. Uh you were actually at that show. Um being at one of the biggest wrestling events of the year, um, what is it kind of, how does it make you reflect on your own wrestling career? Um, uh, because seeing them on TV, seeing, seeing it on TV is one thing, but seeing it live and seeing some of the best people at not like it is our craft. It's, I do it, they do it. So like seeing the best people at our craft do it makes you really sit back and be like, okay, let's like, it just, it, it's motivation. Um, me and Wade ended up going on a like just randomly uh, we were. I looked at him. I was like, "Hey, we're gonna be in Nashville for Southern Underground Pro." I was like, "I found fifty fifty five dollar tickets. Do you want to go?" And he goes, "Why not?" So we ended up ever made because it it's one of the greatest memories and just because it it was work and it was a vacation because yes, I did do Southern Underground Pro, but I also got to just chill out with my friends and just reflect and watch someone do the best at at it do it right and uh, just seeing some of the pictures i mean it wasn't exactly bad seats and uh you got to see the, the now and famous tractor uh moment with rock lesnar Dude, that wasn't even the coolest thing to see live. The, in my opinion, Edge's entrance uh, when he returned was the coolest thing I've ever seen live, as far as like a entertainment spectacle. Cause like the pyro and just the way they snuck it on, like you're so focused on the ring that they snuck that the whole set right up on me, and I didn't even have a freaking clue. And so when it did it and I looked over, I was like, oh, my God, when did that get there? Mm-hmm. And it was just so cool. But, yes, the tractor thing was awesome, too. I got to see Roman catch the mic live, too. Hmm. Um, it, that was definitely one of the events where like, people were like, oh, I don't want to see Roman and Brock again. I don't want to see Roman and Brock again. And I, I saw it live, and I was like, no, you you want to see this match? <laughs> you want to see this show? It it was good. <laughs> it was one of those events for sure. Um, I was I was the same way. Um, I I had seen you know Roman and Brock since WrestleMania thirty one. We all have, 
So I was like, man, I was like, I'm really not excited for Roman and Brock. And Wade was like, I am. And then once I watched it, I was like, man, you got to see a Roman and Brock match live. It's just, it's t- completely different. Those two are one of the, like, the best doing it today. Oh, yeah. I was at the first one at 31. I, I saw that match live. I was there. Uh, I'm jealous. I'm one of the biggest Seth Rollins fans. <laughs> I wanted to go to that Mania so bad. It's definitely a good one. Um, maybe my whole by night one of this... Here's WrestleMania, I was at that one as well. But, uh, you know, it's an personal debate for another time. <laughs> right. Oh. Right. Can you tell us about the, the unofficial Peeps ambassador? Oh my gosh. Man. I threw that up on Twitter just to be funny and everyone took to it and was like, Oh my God, peeps are disgusting. You're so gross. And I just ran with it. I ran with it so much that I shoved peeps in Reverend Dan Wilson's mouth. (laughs) I absolutely love peeps. And if peeps would sponsor me, I would absolutely adore it. I mean, the one reply from Dan Wilson uh, from Twitter. I'll, uh, I'll read it. Uh, this motherfucker would like peeps. <laughs> it seems like a really out of character, but on brand for, for him now. <laughs> I think it's, it's on brand for the, for the rev. You would, I wouldn't think peeps would get as much heat as they have, but like in recent years, like people are really like, rebelling against them. I don't get it. I don't get it. I thought the Peeps Pepsi was good. Uh, Every Peeps flavor I've ever tried is good. The Hot Tamales Peeps, hands down, so good. Nothing beats a yellow, like, Dove Peep, but those those Hot Tamale ones are pretty... They're up there. I never had those ones, but I had, like, dark chocolate horsey Peeps that were just, like, Phenomenal. Oh, they're so good. I know exactly. I've had I I can safely say unless there's like some wild like limited edition ones, I've had every peach flavor and there's not a bad one. And I will agree that you love that. I like peeps. I don't see why um they get as much hate as they do. Right. Um, can you? I don't either. It's a shame. Now, uh, can you tell us about um, reviewing Flaming Hot Mountain Dew? <sighs> that was the dumbest decision I've ever made. <laughs> I've been in I've been in the ring with Tank and Cruel, and I would rather do that again than drink flaming hot Cheeto Mountain Dew. Uh, I saw it, and me and Wade we uh, we don't we try not to drink sodas every uh, very often, but when Mountain Dew puts out a new flavor, we'll buy one and try it. Um, well, I told Wade I was like, "Listen, dude, this is gonna be bad. Let's just let's just buy one, and we can both just try it." Well, I, for some reason, I said, Wade, I was like, video this, because I feel like it's going to be hilarious. And I just took the drink, and man, it was the biggest, just like, worst decision I've ever made. It was so disgusting. I mean, what did it taste like? I mean, soda is supposed to be, like, you know, it's cooling, and being hot sounds kind of productive. Um, have, have you ever had a flaming Hot Cheeto? Yeah. If you've ever had a flaming Hot Cheeto, it tastes exactly like it with, with a, with a dash of regular Mountain Dew. 
that is an interesting play for for sure. It was, oh, it was bad. If anyone drinks that regularly, they have a problem and should be checked out, like, to see if they're psychologically okay. All right. Um, can you tell us your love of Tokyo Ghoul? My love of Tokyo Ghoul came from, I, um, so... I saw a person when I worked at a, I worked at a thrift shop, and I saw someone come in with a Tokyo Ghoul T-shirt, and I was like, "Man, that's really cool." So I ended up watching it, and I just fell in love with it. Um, I I have the mask. I have uh, I have a T-shirt design that's based off the T-shirt I originally saw. Um, <laughs> I think one of those, excuse me, I think it's one of those great starter animes that if someone wants an introductory on anime that doesn't want like your normal Pokemon or your Naruto or anything like that, I think that's a good um, starter because it'll get you like, oh, this is what anime's like, and also it's not very long, so you can complete it and uh, it not like maybe One Piece that has so many episodes. Oh yeah, one piece has uh, uh, over a thousand episodes at this point. Um, but, um, what did you think about Route A, the second season? Um, I enjoyed it, but I didn't like how... I enjoyed it a lot better than I did uh, Re. I think that's what it was called. Yeah. Um, I think my opinion season season one was the best, and it had that banger theme song. Unravel is such an underrated anime theme song. Um, but season one was the best. Season two was like, I mean, right up there with one, just maybe not as good. And then Re was just like, man, this is not entertaining anymore. And a lot of people give me flack for that. Cause they're like, Re is one of the best seasons. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't get into it like everyone else did. Re season one was okay. It kind of went back to season one, but season two of Re because they had to fit in like 120 chapters of the manga it just seemed so convoluted that you didn't know what was going on and I couldn't right. understand how <laughs> right and I was the same way because I've yet to read the manga just because I'm lazy and haven't had just won't go out and buy it yet but uh, I want to read the manga so I know what happened between all this, but uh, for the casual viewer, like, they're not, like I said, it's a good starter, but, like, once you get into the later seasons, for the casual viewer, they're just gonna be like, oh, what the heck happened here? Right. Because I read, it's probably the only manga I've ever read, but Tokyo Ghoul, I read from uh, the, book, the beginning to the end. Um, I had, I read like a couple chapters of Re and I just didn't have time to read the rest of it. But um after Kaneki um has the altercation with uh Yamadi, um, that's why I asked you about Route A, because a lot of people don't like it because it wasn't true to um the manga. Um so I both both don't bother me, but um, it was interesting to read what the actual story was from Route A, how they divorced their life from it. Right. And when when shows like uh, when shows alternate from the source material, I don't I don't hate it because I get to see other people's creativity in a scene that's already made 
but twist it a little bit and a little bit more creative. And I absolutely, so when people stray from the source material, I don't understand why people get mad because it's just other people showing their talent and their creativity. Um, I also suggested that, uh, to, uh, to what, uh, I suggested Colby Carino to watch Tokyo Ghoul. I don't know if he has yet. If you ever have him on your podcast, definitely bring it up because I want to know. I've been trying to get Colby on. Uh, haven't been successful yet. But I definitely will ask him. He's a busy man. He's a super busy man. Oh, yeah. Um, and obviously, like you said, um, Unravel is one of the biggest bangers of a song ever in anime. And I don't care what you say about the anime, you can't say anything bad about Unravel. It's literally a banger. <laughs> I have, uh, I have a... I have the original, like, Japanese version on my Spotify, and I have a ver English version by, I think her name's Anna Lee, and I listen to those way more than I should. No, man, you need, if you're doing the English version of the song, Morgan Berry, um, the un, um, uh, unknown songbook, I think she went for it on YouTube, that is the best uh, English translation of that song. Okay, I'll definitely, I'll definitely give. Definitely, I like I. When the song, I I literally scoured all of YouTube and listened to every version of, of the English translations, and that was by far the best. Hey, um. I will definitely give it a shot. I'm actually typing it down in my notes right now. Just so, just so I don't forget. Yeah, um, Morgan Berry. She's actually um, doing anime. Uh, she's a voice actor as well now. She does um, um, Inuyasha's daughter in Hasuzume. So, yeah. Okay, I haven't watched that one yet. It's on a. Uh, there's I'm, there's a couple people telling me to watch it uh, right now. I'm trying to make, get finish up a couple other series so I can start Demon Slayer. Oh, you haven't seen Demon Slayer yet? I'm very new to uh, anime. The only animes I've seen to completion is Tokyo Ghoul and Tiger Mask W. Okay. What you said that you're you're watching a couple right now. What are you watching? Um. So the only series that I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to finish, are a series I watched with my uh, my fiance. Uh, right now we're watching You on Netflix, mm -hmm. and uh, we've started watching Grey's Anatomy, which. I take I take back anything I've ever said about Grey's Anatomy. It is so entertaining. Hmm. Well, uh, you definitely want to get on um, um, Demon Slayer. I feel like it it has the emotional depth of Tokyo Ghoul, but never kind of wavers from um, you know quality like Tokyo Ghoul did. did fall off on the later episodes and seasons. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us about your love of Fortnite? Uh, you cut out right at the end. I am so sorry. What was that again? Can you tell love us? Love of what? Can you tell us? Tell us your love of Fortnite. <laughs> My love of Fortnite? Oh, man, that started, like, in, like, 2018, dude. Like, uh... 
<laughs> I remember I would always I get bored of games really quickly unless it's like a WWE or like a MLB the show type game. So uh, <clears throat> I would scroll through the free games on PlayStation Network all the time, and this and Fortnite popped up one day, and I was like, "Man, this sounds cool!" And I remember it because if you've ever watched The Condemned with Steve Austin, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, yeah. It's so cheesy, but it's like uh, it's very much a battle royale type movie. And I was like, "Man, this is like The Condemned." Uh, so I got it, and man, it was so much different. But I have played since then, and now it's it became a game where all my friends used to play it. Um, and now it's just like it's it's synonymous with hey, let's sit down, let's get everyone together, and let's play some games. Now it's mainly with more of my family. Um, my little sister got extremely good on it, and now she actually is better than me. <laughs> and I was the one that taught her how to play the game, so it's mainly like a way for I. It's a it's a place where all of us can come together and just socialize and game. Isn't that always the case? The student becomes the uh, teacher. Yep, <laughs> that's <laughs> always the case. Um, what's your go-to Fortnite skin? Uh, the Rust Lord from season three. It has been my favorite since I, um, <clears throat> since I got that skin. <clears throat> Excuse me. No worries. No. Um, but if it's not, if I'm not using the Rust Lord, it's usually I'm matching with someone on my uh, team. Like uh, the Avengers. Yeah, like, we'll do, like, all villains, or we'll do, like, um, all superheroes. The other day, we did, like, some, we were all this fluffy reindeer skin, and we ended up winning. We were like, ah, it's because we, uh, we all matched, when really, that it was just because we all played a really good game. <laughs> no, I'm the same way. Like, if there's a skin that, you know, I start winning as, well, this is the lucky skin. <laughs> I'll have to keep doing this. Yep, and it's been I have been that way I've been that way since I started playing the game. I think everybody's is at this point. All right. Um I think it's time for the colossal question. Let's say that they're making a movie about you. Every movie has a soundtrack. What would be the first three songs on the Cross and Build Back movie soundtrack? It would start with a uh, title track by Machine Gun Kelly. Um, man, I'm going to try to give a really good answer that actually tell the songs tell a story. Um, probably, um, I'm not okay, I promise, right in the middle, and then, uh, by My Chemical Romance, and then at the end, it would be Play This When I'm Gone by MGK again. Alright, a solid three picks right there. As, like, the credits roll, that would be the song that plays at the end, is Play This When I'm Gone. Now, who plays uh, Carson in the movie? And you can't say yourself because you're obligated to make a Stanley S. Tanya. Oh, sweet. I was going to ask if I could have some kind of cameo. That's awesome. You, like, read my mind. Um, Do you want, do you want a serious answer or a funny answer, or do you just want both? Hey, whatever you want to give me. Um, so my funny answer is just because someone I know that would portray me better than anyone, uh, Aaron Wade, just because he's a goofball, and it would be awesome. 
Um, man, Tanner Buchanan would be cool. Uh, he plays Robbie from Cobra Kai. Okay, yeah. I think he's an extremely good actor, and he's should be doing more than what he's doing. That's a, a good pick. I like to do some trouble time. Um, now, every movie has a supporting cast. Who would be three people in your movie, and who would play them? I feel like Aaron has to be one of them, right? Aaron Wade. Aaron Wade would be in there. Um... Could I just pick anyone past present, like that's yeah. even if they're dead? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, who would play Aaron Wade? I may not even say dead people. I just wanted to like broaden my choices or widen my choices. Okay. Um, I mean, there's CGI right now. Anybody could be in anything. Man. So Wade would be in there and we probably we would make uh Daniel Bryan play him because he looks they look similar. Okay. Um Noah Hossman. I would probably put like an early early nineties, eighties uh Rick Steiner to play Noah Hossman. Uh And then we'll throw we'll throw Bailey Blake in there, and I'll have Brad Pitt play Bailey Blake. He's like he's the one guy that we have to blow the budget on to get, but he's just a support. He's not even the main character. He's just a supporting role. I was gonna say like wow, Daniel Bryan, uh, Scott Steiner, and then Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rick Steiner. We got to do not Scott Steiner. It's Rick Steiner. My bad. My bad. Uh, Rick Steiner. It, either way, it sounds like a great movie. You yeah, we got to blow the. We got to spend a little bit of money. <laughs> it sounds like a great movie. Pre-order the tickets now. All right. Um, Coming out November twenty. Never. <laughs> Right. Um, and to a controversial subject, pineapple on pizza. What's your stuff? I think it belongs. Pineapple on pizza is the greatest thing to ever be thought of or invented. I argue with my fiance every time we order pizza about getting pineapple on pizza, and I'm sure she hates it by now, but I always win. Oh, so your fiancé doesn't like pineapple on pizza? No, she does not. She despises it. Interesting. Oh, I mean, uh, you like peeps, pineapple on pizza... You just have all of the the uh, the food controversies down, don't you? <laughs> all the all the heel foods, if I like them. Hey, it makes you a good heel. No. You are correct. I'm. I wouldn't say I'm a great heel, but man, they hate me. <laughs> What's your spirit Pokemon? Eevee. Ooh, sweet. E and just just normal Eevee. Not, uh, because before they before they uh, when they evolve, they're all aggressive and shit. I just want to be, like, laid back, chilling on my couch, peaceful Eevee. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, we love the late, great Tracy Smothers on the show. 
Do you know the acronym for thug? T-H-U-G. Oh, man. Derek Neal is going to kill me. I know this. Because I was talking to him about it because he has a thug shirt. Uh, oh, man. I'm thinking. I Because I know... He has, it's like, nobody does, his shirt says nobody does it like a thug. Yes. Would you like to come oh, back man. to it? Or would you like Isn't to... Isn't it like T is for terrible? Is, is it T is for terrible? Something like that. Yes, T is for terrible. Ah, oh, man. It's like... H is, H is for hell. U is for ugly. I can't remember what G. Let's see. T H U. I can't remember what G is. G is for jail. It's. I can't. I didn't do it in a word either. T. Terrible hell. Ugly. G is for jail. Okay. <laughs> yep. yep. I was close. Uh, you had it. I mean, you just didn't have G is for jail. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if Derek watches this, I'm not. I'm not in trouble. <laughs> just, you got three out of the four levels. So I mean, I can't be mad at that. And uh, you know, obviously, we love the late great Tracy Smothers, and we're trying to keep the memory alive. For sure, I agree. We sh should 100%. Now, uh, the weirdest question would be asked on a wrestling interview. Would you ever consider wrestling a rock? Not Wayne Johnson, not the country, an actual rock. I mean... <laughs> I wrestled Aaron Wayne dressed up as uh, New Jack, so I think I could wrestle a rock and make it pretty entertaining. So yeah, I would. To answer your question, yeah, I would do it. Well, uh, there is this wrestler named Psycho Mike that wrestled an actual rock for over fifteen minutes uh, in a tungsten man match, an Iron Man match that lasts for two weeks. I want to watch this match. Oh my god, do I want to watch this match. I will send it, uh, uh, no spoilers, I'll send it to you after the, uh, the interview. Alright, um. Okay, sweet, because <laughs> that sounds great. And a more serious note, where do you see yourself in five years? Ah, uh, man. This is always the tough one, because I don't want to it, and then... Ah, uh, man. Just making towns. I... See, in eight... I'd be wrestling eight years in five years, so maybe maybe I'd be signed. I don't know. I kind of want to enjoy my time on the indies. Before, because, like, everyone's like, oh, you either do this for money, or you're not doing it, or whatever. But no, I do it just because I enjoy going out there and entertaining people. Um, so, man, I would say just, you know, making, you know, being a bigger name on the indies. Perfect, just studying and sharpening my tools to perfect my craft. Okay. And um, what's a match people should go out of their way to see that best shows off what uh, Carson Bill Beck is all 
Um, uh, it's on Aaron Wade's YouTube channel. It's our match from the uh, Christmas show in 2021 at TWE that I spoke about earlier. Um, that's that one is the pr the match I'm most proud of. Um, me and Braden Toon did a did a really cool match at Galaxy Pro as well. I think the the, the delay is making it seem like I'm interrupting you, but I promise I'm not trying to interrupt you. Oh no no, it, it's just the, the delay. It's fine. <laughs> um, but okay, cool. Of the second match, could we find that on YouTube as well? Yes. Okay. Um, I will put um, both, I will find out both of those matches and I will put uh them in the description of the video below, both on YouTube and Castbox. Uh, for anybody that uh hasn't seen them, wants to see them, we see them again after this interview. Yes, after the interview. And since we are nearing the conclusion of this interview, we are wrestling with the eight questions of doom. Da, da, da. This is our speed round, our bonus round. Oh no. Question. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, excluding yourself, greatest wrestler of all time. Triple H. Worst wrestler. The worst, oh man, the worst wrestler of all time. Uh, um... Oh my god, James Ellsworth. Yes. Your main event in WrestleMania for the World Championship. Who is your opponent? Aaron Wade. And Noah Hoffman. If you could come out to anyone's entrance music, past or present, who would it be? Oh, man. Uh, Maria's... No, that's not correct. I was going to say Maria's uh, with legs like that, but that's just my favorite entrance song. Uh, <laughs> Triple H is uh, my time. Oh, sweet. Dennis, the sentence. K Fig is... Dead. We would have also accepted Taste Great on Toast. <laughs> yeah, it probably does. Yeah, absolutely. Squash. Vegetable or fruit? I guess it would be a vegetable, wouldn't it? I'm not sure. I know there's a thing where it's like, is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable too? But I haven't heard it about squash. Okay, you're going with vegetable. Yes, I'm going to go with vegetable. Well, it is indeed a fruit, and it is tomato logic. Ah, so I was close. Yes, 50 /50. I was on the right path. <laughs> Oh, but you're part of Squash Squad now, and that means a hell of a lot more. Yes. New Japan wrestler Tai Chi. His ring gear gets smaller every year. He really morphs himself to the world. My question, what is the appropriate trunks to butt cheek ratio for ring gear? Oh. <sighs> 
have no clue. Um, I, I don't know ratio is good enough, so I'm just going to say as long as it like doesn't show anything, you're Gucci. Like as long as you're keeping it PG and because like think about it, you got little kids in the audience. You don't got to show everything, but also like if you want to if you want to like show whatever you want, also I guess it doesn't really matter as long as like you're entertaining. Man, that's a tough one. So, whoever, whatever anybody wants to do, correct? Is, yeah, because I mean, it's like, you're your own character. As long as you're not, like, exposing yourself, as long as you're covering and concealed, I guess you could show how much butt cheek you wanted to show. Alright. And the last question, the main event, the thing everybody wants to know. Have you ever had a conversation with a stranger in a supermarket about Darby Allen. You you cut out at the end again. Okay. Uh, what was the end? A conversation about what? Have you ever had a conversation with a stranger in a supermarket about Darby Allen? <laughs> yes, but it was on accident because <laughs> one of my friends was trying to steal a Darby Allen action figure, and I said, stop. I literally said, stop trying to steal that Darby Allen action figure. And turned around, and there was a Walmart employee. So I had to explain what was going on. So technically, I talked about Darby Allen to a stranger in a supermarket. Okay. There you go. And, of course, that is the correct answer. And that will conclude this interview. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me. I had a blast. Once again, Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. And once again, where can we find everything Cross and Delta on social media and your market? TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter is BC Dobeck. The B stands for best, and the C stands for Carson Dobeck. Um, but... Pro Wrestling Tees, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees is just type in Carson Dobeck, you'll find it. I don't, I don't know my link right off the top of my head. It was just so bad. I came so unprepared because I forgot about Pro Wrestling Tees. And in T Public is BC Dobeck as well. And of course, and I believe that's it. And of course, you don't uh, even have to type it into your Google machine. Um, all you have to do is go into the description of the video below or on YouTube and press box all the links to all his social media and merchandise will be there. Uh, simply click the link. A new tab will appear on whatever device you're on. Uh, you have no excuse. Buy a damn shirt. Please, please do. I want to I wanna buy we more weapons so I can beat the shit out of CJ Lawler and Nathan Mowry. Sorry, excuse my language. <laughs> yeah, he needs weapons, people. All right, uh, thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, put on YouTube chat box. Um, of course, this was sponsored by Live Energy, Elmer Coffee. Uh, join us um, tomorrow as we interview. We interview tomorrow. Uh, I believe uh, Vicky Two Thumbs. Yes, Vicky Two Thumbs tomorrow, uh, and then next uh, Tuesday and Wednesday new incredible mm -hmm. interviews. 
Um, follow the show at Wrestling with E, but on Twitter and Instagram for information on who will interview me and go interview them. Links to those interviews and so much more. Um, you can follow me personally at James G993. <laughs> All right, uh, Carson, when I say Wrestling with, you say entity, okay? I got you. For our very special guest, Carson Dilka, Clico Yacht, Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling with Entertainment. Ah, that's the crowd going wild. Ah. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.